What's up everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today's video is actually a user suggested video. It comes from Kevin Bull 6597 and he asked to go over the masking tool within the color toning tool of raw therapy. If you, like Kevin Bull 6597, have a suggested tutorial, then go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Also, if you want more photo editing tutorials, go ahead and subscribe. I've got plans for Lightroom tutorials, Darkroom tutorials, raw therapy tutorials, and so much more. And enough of the preamble, let's go ahead and jump into it. So I've gone ahead and opened up this photo in raw therapy, and you can see that uh, raw therapy has added an adjustment curve. And I wanna just start from scratch. So I'm gonna come up and in the processing profiles, I'm going to choose neutral, which is going to reset this image back to its neutral playing field. So now that I reset things, I'm gonna do some basic edits. First, I'm just gonna click auto level. So it's gonna go ahead and adjust my exposure and black and white point. And then I will come over here to the transform tab and underneath profile lens correction, I'm just gonna click automatic. And yes, it did select the lens and the camera that I used. So all of that worked out great. Okay, now let's get into the color tab and down here into color toning. If we turn that on, you can see that nothing happens, but if I come down here and move this dot around and then let go, you can see that there's color of whatever, wherever this dot is on this grid, this amount of color is added to my scene. So I'm gonna reset this here. It's important to note that underneath the method, there's all of these different methods and we could go through all of these, but uh, this particular video is about this down here where it says mask. So we have H, C, and L. This is hue, chroma, and luminance. And these are different ways of masking things so that you can only affect what you want to affect. For instance, if I only wanted to affect the shadows, maybe I would create a mask with the luminance values. And that way, uh, the bright parts of the image would not be affected with the color that I want to add. So in fact, let's go ahead and do that. First thing I'm gonna do is just come down here and change this from linear to equalizer. And you see that we have this grid that opens up. This grid goes from black to white and uh, top to bottom. Now, if I start moving these points around, nothing happens. And nothing happens for two reasons. One, we can't see where our mask is. And two, we haven't actually applied any color. So if I go ahead and apply color here, and then I start moving the mask around, maybe I do this, and I don't know, something like this. Yeah, there we go. Now you can see that we're affecting the highlights here with that blue color, but not as much of the rest of the image. So that's one way that you can see your mask. I find the best way to do it is actually come down here to this show mask checkbox. And if you see wherever the bright yellow is, that is where the mask is being applied. And then everything else is, is uh, being applied uh, like you would have with a mask. It's being applied similarly to a Photoshop mask where white is full opacity, black or no color in this case, or no yellow in this case is zero opacity and then anything in between is uh you know some sort of gradient so if i tick this off and then i turn our whole thing on and off you can see that like in these parts of the leaf where the mask wasn't really applied it still receives some of that blue color that we had currently have applied so i'm gonna go ahead and reset my color here and i'm gonna reset my mask here and I'm going to turn on show mask and bam. Right now, if we change the color at all with the color toning tool, it's applied 100% across the whole image. So where do I want this mask to affect things? Well, I want it to affect the shadows, like we said. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my luminance slider here that's up on the right-hand side because that's uh, indicating the brightest parts of the image. And I'm just gonna bring that down. And you can see already, now all of these bright yellow parts are being applied with blue, but the leaf right here in the front, and uh, there's kind of a gradient as that goes off there to the edge of the leaf, is not going to receive the color from our color toning tool. 
So actually, let's uh, go ahead and just add in this blue here. That's what I want. Kind of a, that uh, teal, orange and teal look. So this is maybe more teal. But as you can see, this really kind of just shifts the white balance. I really only want the actual shadow part to have this blue hue. So let's go back to our mask. And I'm going to add a second point and bring this down. Okay. And now really, truly only our shadows are receiving that color. And I can, you know, I can bring this up if I want more of those back shadows to receive the color. So let me turn this off and let me go ahead and turn our tool on and off to see the before and after. One thing that's really fun is if you put your mouse over over one of these dots, you can see that there's the blue and the yellow right here. Here's yellow, here's blue. I can really smooth out my mask if, if I grab one of these handles and just move it out. Or I can really make my mask very sharp if I bring that closer in. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't know, something like that. And maybe I'll even smooth it out here up top. Okay, I turn this off and see where we're at. Go ahead and just really crank that teal up. Okay, so there we go. Now, the only other thing to pay attention to when working with the mask tool is this mask blur. Currently, it's set to zero. I can bring it to negative 10, or I can bring it way up, you know. So, and you can see that this blurs out our mask, which can be really helpful. In this particular photo, it might not be as helpful because some of this sharp leaf is going to get affected by the background. Let me turn this off. And let me turn this down and then turn this back up. And you can see, maybe you're like right here in this leaf, the difference that the mask makes. So for now, in this particular image, I'm gonna leave this at zero. I don't really feel like we need that blur. I do, however, feel like we need to bring this back a little bit. You don't want it to be so strong. Now, of course, you could use these other masks. So let's go ahead and use the hue mask. I'm going to turn on the equalizer, and you can see right here. Uh, let me turn this mask off. You can turn a mask off by just switching it back to linear. So let me go ahead. You know, so we will open up our hue selector. And let's go ahead and turn on this color toning and reset our color toning. Let's say that I want to add some orange to my leaves here. In order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and select this tool right here. And this is the color picker tool. And you just hold down control and then left mouse button click wherever you want there to be a selection. So I'm going to click this leaf right here. And then I will go ahead uh, and turn on our mask. And let's go ahead and pull this down. And this one, there we go. Now we're starting to just get the leaves. Now this is a situation where using that blur is going to be really helpful because I can turn the orange all the way up here. Something like that. And then if I increase the blur, you can see that these leaves or even back here. There you go. Now you can see a good difference, especially in this leaf up here, what happens with the blur. So I'll blur that out. Of course, this is way too red, so let's go ahead and make it more orange. There we go. <laughs> Something like that. Let me look at my mask again. So I want some of these areas affected as well. So let's see if I shift my fall off. There you go. Go ahead and shift this over. 
Uh, that's much better. Okay, turn that off. Maybe shift this over just a hair. And adjust the fall ever so slightly. Okay, so now I can turn this off and on and you can see the difference that this makes. Of course, I feel like this is way too saturated and this is where you can play with the saturation. Of course, uh, you can play with the slope. It looks at the color that's being affected and then chooses how many colors around it are also affected. You can play with the offset, which deals with the black value and the power, which deals with the kind of exposure of where the mask is. So for me, I would probably just pull saturation back to something more like that. Okay, there you have it. I hope that learning how to mask within the color toning tool has been really helpful for you. I know that it's a feature that I personally use quite often, and so I hope that it can be a good addition to your personal workflow. If you've made it this far into the video, I thank you so much. If you have already subscribed, I also really thank you. If you haven't subscribed, but this video has been helpful to you, I would ask that you just hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one.